Hello, did you know that today's National Investment Bank traces its roots back to 1945? After the end of the war, indigenous of the then Gold Coast started agitations against increased imports to the detriment of local industries. In response, the colonial government at the time set up the Gold Coast Indigenous Development Corporation to spearhead the uh, development of industrial companies through support to the private sector. That organization was transformed into the Ghana Industrial Development Corporation when Ghana won independence. Then in 1963, that agency became the National Investment Bank, which we have today. NIB has its glorious past. It is involved in the setting up of Nestle Ghana, Alu Works. It gave birth to the ADB. It gave birth to the Merchant Bank, now UMB. But today, NIB has its own challenges. It has a capital deficit of 2.2 billion. It is yet to meet the Bank of Ghana's minimum capital requirement. It has bad PR, but there's hope, says the new management led by Samuel Sapon. We are here today to interact with Samuel Sapon to understand the drive that is behind him and what his dream is for the bank. Mr. Sapon, welcome to Banking and More. Thank you very much for having me. It's, it's interesting that you came to NIB at a time that the bank was suffering from bad PR and uh, its books weren't too good and it had challenges meeting the minimum capital. What drove you to come back into the industry after retiring from it? Yes, uh, thank you for, for that question. Um, I thrive on challenges. Uh, I actually get bored when uh, we are operating in normal times. So when I got a call from the, the Minister of Finance asking whether I wanted to do national service, I wholeheartedly said yes. And um, I started my work here officially on May the 1st, 2019, as the new managing director. Uh, we took over a bank that was poorly managed in the past from a technical perspective as well as from a corporate governance perspective. Working with the new um, board of directors, which were appointed in 2017. Uh, we've actually analyzed the bank, assessed what was wrong, what went wrong, um, in combination with the auditors, and have come to understand exactly what the situation is. And we have a plan to turn it around. And it, it can be done easily. I'm very confident about that. When you say a bank that was uh, poorly managed, from governance perspective, what, what do you mean? Um, there were a bit, a bit of lapses in terms of uh, the management, in terms of how they made decisions. So we had uh, a number of um, placements, uh, bank placing money with non-bank financial institutions and the like uh, without re regard to board approvals. So those were some of the things that uh, had occurred. Typically a bank would have controls in place, it would have delegated limits that management can work with and anything beyond their delegated limit has to be referred to the board for approval. Uh, there were instances that uh, some of these things were done without board approval. But, I mean, we are here, we understand what has happened, and so we are ready to move forward. From the management perspective, what is it that went wrong that you are trying to correct in terms of finance perspective? Yeah, um, it's, it's a whole, uh, managing of a bank uh, has a number of aspects to it. Uh, the main key which the public doesn't see is the management of the balance sheet which requires a bit of technical competence to do that. Uh, what we see in terms of uh, the services through our branch network and through the various channels, internet channels, um, internet mobile, those are the output of some of the things that have to be done in the background in order to be able to um, provide those services to the, to the public. So you have to have controls in place uh, with regard to uh, what people can do and what they cannot do. You have to be able to detect things that happen outside of the governance framework that you set for various staff or departments. And there were weaknesses in, in, in that space. Uh, the balance sheet was not properly managed in terms of uh, the assets and, and the liabilities. So for example, you had a bank that was paying very high interest rates on deposits compared to your competi competitor banks. So those were things that we needed to uh, correct. Uh, you have to look at the position of your, your foreign currency because uh, assets and liabilities, if you don't manage that well, you're going to incur losses. So those were things that were also 
missing and that we found and we are, we are actually correcting. The loan book is a, mo a, a very important one. For a bank, you have to be able to have a, a risk appetite and to be able to have diversification of your loan book. Uh, we, that was not the case. We had a high concentration in, in one sector compared to others and that also as a, as, uh, increased the potential losses of the bank. These, so these issues, these challenges, what were the, their impact on the survival of the bank in terms of losses that it made, in terms of corners that it's in, in that you have to struggle to bring it out, make it uh, make profit, and then? Ultimately, uh, it's, it led to uh, losses uh, uh, over, over a number of periods. And once you incur losses, you actually erode your, your capital. And that's what, what occurred uh, in this instance. Talking about capital, you know, uh, your governance issues together with the finance add into the capital. Some thought that the Bank of Ghana should have taken your license. Um, I think, you know, uh, NIB is a state bank. It's owned by the government of Ghana. And it played a, spe a specific role in the past in terms of supporting industrial development. I think the bank, uh, the government make a decision in order to uh, re restructure NIB and return it to its original mandate. So basically that, that's the, what was went into the decision making. That, that, was that fair to the private sector? Because the private banks that went down, they also have a role to play. So if NIB, which is uh, directly owned by the state, is not quoted on quote behaving well, it, it should also suffer the penalties for which the private guys suffered. Well, my understanding is that uh, the other banks were given opportunities for recapitalization. Uh, Bank of Ghana gave them ample opportunities to uh, bring in money uh, to recapitalize it, and they were not able to do that. The government of Ghana had decided to recapitalize NIB, so it's in a position to do so. Mm. Talking about the capital, we understand you've had a capital of 800 million. Mm. Tell us mm. about it. Tell us about the details. Yes, we last month we had a, a capital injection of about 800 million, uh, which has gone to strengthen the, the balance sheet as well is going to have an impact in terms of the earning assets and allow us to increase the, uh, our earnings, as well as uh, giving us greater flexibility in terms of liquidity. So it's, it's, it's a good uh, uh, step in the right direction. What are the terms of that 800 million, that capital? Well, the 800 million came in a form of bond, okay. and we're in the process of converting that into equity. Okay. If you know, NIB has a few minority shareholders up close to about 5%. And so you have to go through a process in terms of issuing uh, kind of a rights issue, which will then enable the government to convert this 800 million into its uh, equity for the, for the bank. So that's what we are going through at the moment. Okay. And uh, am I right? Is that bond? Is that not debt? No, no. That so the, the, the initial money that has come in is in the form of a bond, but it's going to be converted. Uh, into equity. So that's a process that we are going through over the next two months. Okay, it's 10 years. It's a 10 year bond? Yes. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Um, what was the cost of the transaction? Um, th the, that is basically, um, I think, about 19%, which the, is, uh, the government is uh, taking that. Okay, so what will this 800 million mean to the bank? We know that is uh, insufficient looking at your deficit. But what will it mean in the medium term as we look for the uh, additional? Oh, it's it's gone on significantly. Uh, it's going to significantly help uh, with the the liquidity of the bank, as I indicated. Uh, we we are liquid at the moment. We don't have issues in terms of uh, meeting our liquidity uh, obligations at all at all. But this has gone to strengthen the balance sheet, as you know. It it's, it allows us to increase the the earning assets of of the bank which will increase the, the revenues. And then as well as, uh, as we convert it into equity, it helps uh, with the recapitalization of the bank. Yeah. Mm. So when you, with this in mind, what is your message to the customer out there? What is your message to the stakeholder out there? Um, I would like to assure um, our customers and, 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 and Ghanaians in general that NIB is on track. Um, the new board and management basically have actually uh, understood the issues we put in place uh, uh, solutions to uh, stabilize the bank, managing the balance sheet well, uh, cutting costs, uh, going after those who owe the bank in terms of recoveries as well, putting in controls and governance processes. And today we don't have any issue with liquidity. We are able to meet the needs of our, our customers. And so 
I think I think Ghanaians would be proud of that we are on track to uh, basically reposition this bank as the, one of the, the premier bank for industrial development. Uh, as part of the whole process, we've also developed a strategic plan that will transition the bank from its current state into a specialized bank that focuses on industrial development. So we are, we are, we are on track and it, it, it's, uh, we are on track and the customers should have no issues at all, concerns in terms of banking with. Talking about recoveries, we know that uh, some of your funds were also locked up in the, some of the collapsed financial institutions. What is the status now? Uh, we've, we've started getting some of those back, the ones that uh, basically were with the uh, other banks. Uh, we've gotten those monies back. Uh, the ones that were placed with savings and loans, we've got most of it back. Uh, we're waiting for the ones that were placed with finance houses. Uh, that SEC is, is under SEC juris jurisdiction. But we, we've, we've put in the necessary claims and uh, liaising with all the necessary stakeholders to, to get the money back. And, and, and that, that really would, would help with, with the, um, the liquidity, the liquidity issue. issue and the re reduce the actually the amount of capital required actually. Actually, okay. How much is that? How much so far have you gotten? Uh, we've gotten so far almost close to about uh, 300 million uh, so far. Back, yeah. Behind the capital is a reform, or in front of it, or whatever, it needs to go hand in hand because um, once the capital comes, the structures need to change. What structures are you putting in place to ensure that this capital doesn't come and then gets into the same holes that yeah. initially led us to where we are? Yeah, that, that's a, a good question, and, and that, that is my passion because I personally believe that state institutions should be run very well and make lots of money, lots of money. Certain issues are supposed to be profitable. If they are profitable, they can give the government tax, pay taxes. They can pay dividends to the government. They can also help with economic development in various communities. And also create employment because, of course, the, the company is doing well. It expands its operations and then to, uh, it will do well. So for me, uh, I personally believe that state institutions should be, should be run well. As part of this process, we are touching every aspect of the bank. Um, we are touching... Uh, every department and uh, we've brought in some new management people uh, to help uh, inf work with the existing staff to uh, implement the, the various changes that are required. One of the key things that we, we are working on is the policies that govern the bank and uh, we have policies for right from the board constitution which used to be the board charter all the way to board committees and the risk appetite, the liquidity management and all that. So we have we have all these policies that we are de we currently developing. We're developing a fair number of them. It's not only developing the policies, but you have to embed them, make sure uh, the staff live it. And, and, and that is part of the work that we are currently doing. I've also um, basically empowered the staff in my staff directors. I've had two sets of staff directors indicate to the staff that they should be the custodians, that anything that happens to the bank affects their livelihood because the staff have dependence. And so we shouldn't have management be allowed to do whatever they want. Uh, they have to keep an eye in terms of what is happening. And uh, if they see things are not going well, basically to be able to have an engagement with management on the board so that the bank never, never again is run down again. Mm. As part of that reform, are we going, do we have in place a disciplinary system or mechanism that ensures that those who were found to have been involved in activities that didn't go down well with the bank. Those people are taken care of in a way that deters those uh, around. Well, the bank has always had a, a disciplinary process. Uh, um, so uh, employees or people who are found not uh, going against, who are found to do things against what uh, the policies and procedures of the bank, basically they go through a disciplinary process and their sanctions applied accordingly. Yeah. When you look at the staff morale before and now, what, what, what do you make of it? I think staff morale was, was, was low when I first joined in last year. Um, based upon the, the ability for us to be able to stabilize the bank and to be able to uh, make limited investments in, in the operations, uh, staff are actually getting excited about, about, about the prospects of the, of the bank and they are actually working hard. It may interest you to know that since we joined in, in, in May, deposits have actually gone up. And this is thanks to the staff who have been working very hard 
in terms of uh, uh, making sure that we work together as a team to restructure the bank and reposition it to where it should be. W one of your challenges was uh, issuing uh, audited financial accounts. Yeah. Is this something you resolved? Yes, we are, right, we are on track. Uh, as I indicated to you, we've, we've completed 2017, 2018 audits. Uh, and actually, that was part of the reason why uh, there was a delay in the recapitalization because the ministry wanted to be certain that we really understood the issue. So after the 2018 audit, we were able to understand exactly the true position of the bank and we're on track. The 2019 audit is, is almost complete and we, so we will release our financial statement soon. So looking at the 2017-2018, how has the uh, P&L performed? I mean, there were losses in, in both years. There were bo losses in both years. And that's actually contributed to uh, the capital deficit that we're looking at. You, you had some shares in Nestle. And uh, as part of the process to recapitalize, uh, I think something was worked around it. What, what is the latest on it? Yes. Um, um, it as part of the, the recapitalization of the bank as well as improving the liquidity of, of, of the bank because once they, you have some liquidity you re reduce the losses and you don't deepen the, the, the capital deficit. So uh, the government facilitated um, basically what we call uh, a sale and purchase uh, back arrangement where, whereby we sold the, the shares uh, to the government, so the government owns those shares, but we have the option to buy back as part of the agreement. So once uh, NIB's uh, situation, financial situation improves, and we're positioned to do that, we'll buy those back, the shares back, and it's going to be part of the investment uh, portfolio of NIB. We heard it was uh, sold at 400 million. Is that the case, or it was higher? It was, it was higher. It was, it was higher. higher. Like how much? Approximately 500 million. Yeah, so. 500 million. Okay. 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 Uh, Samuel Sapon came here from GCB where you were, uh, you held a couple of positions including a chief transformation officer and, and all that. So the thinking is you are bringing that uh, expertise to come and transform NIB. But when you look at NIB, the setup here and then the setup at GCB, what are the differences that you will need to do uh, in, in, to be able to arrive at where you want to take the bank to? I think um, the differences is uh, basically relates to the extent of the problem. Uh, if you do recall, uh, in 2009, GCB was in a similar situation where basically uh, it wasn't public though, but that actually led to the transformation because if you do recall, most of GCB's uh, loans, almost every 90% of GCB's loans was to Tor, the Tamaria refinery. Uh, the government came in and, and repaid that loan. And then we came in. Uh, I was a deputy to Simon Donu then, and uh, basically uh, part of the team that actually transformed the bank. Um, the issues in terms of uh, looking at the balance sheet, uh, looking at the processes, the controls, I mean, I, I, I basically had good experience in, in a, a GCB to bring to, to bear here. And so, um, I don't really see much difference in terms of the, uh, the, the fundamentals of the issues. We had similar issues and uh, managing the balance sheet, the controls, uh, HR issues, IT systems. I mean, these were things that I was part of the team that transformed uh, GCB. So um, I bring those uh, experiences uh, to bear in, in this role. We are still here with Mr. Samuel Sapon, MD of uh, National Investment Bank. We are trying to understand what he brings to the table, the status of the bank, and what we should expect of it in the coming months and years. Mr. Sapon, one of the challenges we have as a society is sustainability of, uh, uh, of gains. So we see a lot of progress in institutions, then within a period they begin to de uh, derail and then we are back to, to where we are. What are the systems you are putting in place to ensure that whatever gains that you are going to chalk up are really sustained going into the, the, the long term. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, one of the key things is making sure you have the, the, the policies that have been and controls and policies, procedures that have been actually approved by the, the, the board and also more importantly embedded. 
So um, if let me give you an example. If I have a risk policy in terms of what the criteria for giving out certain loans and, and the exception criteria, if there are any, and the, the staff in the risk management area, really department, really understand what have to do, have to be done, and they are empowered to be able to challenge and assess credit in a certain way. There's no way a, an MD can go and basically just tell them to uh, basically approve a loan. Basically, they will be able to challenge it. If I, I as an MD, wants a loan approved, I need to be able to convince them uh, to be able to look at, at the loan in a certain way, but not necessarily to just go ahead uh, to approve it. And as part of that whole process, the culture of the organization has to change. I've actually started embedding that culture, uh, basically talking to the staff, not to basically to be able in a position to challenge me, not to just, if I ask them to do something, they just don't run with it. Because they are the experts in that area, they have to analyze it. And if they have an issue, respectfully come back to me and say, Chief, if I do this in this way, uh, it has these implications. But just don't run. And I've told all the staff, because if I tell you something, you just don't run. And so we need to change the culture of organizations in order to ensure sustainability so that when they are empowered in this way, if a new management comes in and they are basically trying to go around the, the rules or break the rules, basically the, the staff basically are, are the custodians and they will be in a position to challenge it. More importantly also, you need a very strong board and a board that basically understands uh, the banking if in this particular case and to be able to demand from management the right uh, reports and, and to be able to challenge whatever management pr uh, provides. And so those are the things that we are trying to embed. Uh, since joining, we've revamped the board pack, the type of reports that we provide to the board, in-depth report in terms of all aspects of the, of the bank. This has come to stay, and I think uh, going forward, uh, future boards will demand that of management. When, when you envision NIB, what kind of a bank do you see in your mind? And when can we start seeing a semblance of that vision in reality? Yeah. Um, I'm aligned with the, 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 um, the directive from, of the government to get NIB back. So we are going to be the premier uh, financial services partner to industrial development. That, that's what we want to see. But personally, I want to see a modern, progressive bank well run with the controls, good governance, and making lots of money. As I said, you have to make lots of money because once you make lots of money, you're able to make a difference. Today, in our position, we are not even able to help in terms of social responsibility, corporate social responsibility. But if I have the money, I'm more than willing to be able to go and, and build, let's say, 20 schools for, for the government, for example, for various communities. So I personally feel that I want to see a modern, very progressive bank a, a nice environment for, for staff to develop their careers. I understand NIB in its early days was like that. It trained a lot of the current managing directors of the banks and we need to get back to that state where uh, employees would come and, and have a, a very progressive career and, and be able to uh, contribute to the growth of the economy. W will you advise that the bank be listed so that we benefit from the rigor that the stock exchange and capital market in general brings? Yeah, well, it's a public company, though. It's over the, over the counter. Uh, it's, it's actually a, a public company because we have other shareholders as well. So um, indirectly, it's, it's listed. But uh, to have the, the shares trade up, yes, definitely, it will, it will, it will make a difference. Mm -hmm. who, who is Samuel Sapon? Who is this man who retired and is brought back to revive a bank that virtually almost everybody thought is dying or if not dead? Who, who are you? Well, um, just uh, Samuel Sapon has a passion for making sure that uh, I, I've actually developed the, the, the passion for turning things around, particularly in the financial and service industry. I started my banking career in, in Canada, uh, worked with um, the likes of uh, CIBC, which is the former Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce, as well as General Electric uh, uh, consumer uh, lending business. I've had training in risk management and um, also coming back in, to Ghana in 2008, has had a, a very fruitful career in GCB. As I walk around and look at the GCB logo, the current logo, the design of the branches, 
I, I actually championed it. Um, basically, I was the chief transformation officer, of course. I, had, I was working with the board and I was working with uh, a managing director. But I feel proud as I go and I see, I walk into a GCB branch and turn around. As you can see, we built the foundation for where GCB is now today, making profits over 500 million. I want to see that happen. And I, I take pride in terms of being associated with progress turnaround situations. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed and fortunate to be provide the opportunity to turn this around. I, I can tell you that within a couple of years, you will begin to see the new NIB. The changes are ongoing uh, gradually, um, but for it to be fully implemented, I think you can see the beginnings of, of the new NIB uh, very soon. We are not going to continue to be in this environment. We uh, plans are foot to move out of this place, move the head office to a nicer place, uh, which um, would improve the brand of, of, of the bank and also to be able to uh, uh, attract our customers and serve our customers well. So we are investing in all kinds of systems, our IT systems, our controls, our process and pro procedures, our HR, which is basically critical for any, uh, any uh, organization, and, and, and the governance process in general. So uh, stay tuned for, for the new, to see the new NIB. We've been having an insightful discussion with the Managing Director of the National Investment Bank, Mr. Samuel Sapon came here from uh, the private sector after spending quite some time with the GCB bank where he was the chief transformation officer, led a process that transformed the bank into what it is today. He's hoping to replicate that and more here at NIB. We are grateful that you watch. This is Banking and More and I am Maxwell Akalara Dumbila, your regular host.